God. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ben. I'm Emily. And here is our 56 foot narrow boat that we live on. All the time. Full time. Today we're going to talk to you about power. How we get it, how we store it and how we use it. And we're also going to show you a new addition to our power team and how that's helped us loads. It's going to be a bit confusing because at the moment Benny doesn't have a beard and in a minute you'll see he has a beard. This is Benny from the future. So we're going to do some time travelling as well today. And this is Alan. She also lives with us. But she's undertaken a vow of silence if you're wondering why she's not introduced herself. So this is an extra video that we're nestling in amongst our regular weekly videos. Uh, we've had a lot of questions in our comments asking about power, not political power, but electrical power. That's all we can give you the info about, so that's what it'll be about today. Hope you enjoy it, hope you get something out of it. And we'll all end up just a little bit wiser. Or more confused, because it's us doing a factual video. So like a house, we need power for things like light, for our fridge, we have two printers for our business over there, for our laptops, for our phones, for our hoover, and then there are things which are more boat specific, such as the water pump that gets water into our taps, like that, you can hear it going off maybe. We also have a pump to get water out of our bath because the bath is slightly lower than the water line so it needs a push. So when you, if you see a boat and it's going like that's the water pump <laughs> sort of chucking the water out. It's quite a satisfying thing to witness actually. Because obviously in a house, it's all the like, gravity, it uses gravity takes, but you yeah. can't use gravity in a boat because it would just flood the boat because it's under the water line. Now we've got a tiny bath. Sometimes we get in it like this. It's just what has to be done. We've got a headlight like in a car. There's a headlight for the boat, which is actually in a cupboard at the minute. But we do have we're supposed to have one and we have a washing machine so yeah there's a fair list of things that we need power for so we need quite a lot it's pretty much yeah. like being in a house isn't it yeah you know much. If you imagine like all the normal things you have we are what's called continuous cruisers and that means we have to move our boat every two weeks and we don't have a home mooring although we do end up moving our boat a little bit more often than that we sort of move every three days maybe a week boaters who do have a home mooring they have what's called shore power, which is just plugging in straight to the mains, basically. So we don't have that. So we have to rely on other ways to get our power. Some may call it off-grid, some may argue that it isn't, but I think it is. So the ways that we generate power on our boat is through solar and through running our engine that then charges our batteries via an alternator. I don't know how that works, but it's magic. It's not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so solar and our, our engine basically. Through the good sort of bright months, we only use solar. Actually, it's really sunny today and it's the start of November, but there you go. I also have sunburn. Yeah, <laughs> from yesterday. So in the darker months when there's really, you know, there's not much solar, we rely on our engine to then charge the batteries. However, recently we've got a new solution to how we create and store power and that is a Jackery. So we've got the Jackery Explorer 1000 and it has two AC outputs, two USB outputs and two USB-C outputs and then like a car port as well. And it has been a lifesaver already. We haven't even had it for very long, but we're gonna tell you more about that later. So Benny, where are you? How do we get normal electricity on our boat? So the back of the boat we have a large inverter which inverts the electricity from 12 volts to mains to 40 volts and then there are various plugs that run throughout the boat which are linked back to that large inverter. So we have 310 amp hour leisure batteries in the engine bay. They are our battery bank that stores the power that then is linked into the inverter that we can get power from. We do use a lot of 12 volt stuff as well just from like 12 volt cigarette car lighter plug thingies as well. Is that nice? Oh no, she's trying to bite you. I love it, but I want to bite you. Oh, look at that face. It's raining, but it's sunny. 
here are our two 260 watt solar panels. I've tipped them towards the sun. It's the first sunny day in a while, so we best take advantage. And we've also been parked beneath trees. So we've not really had much solar anyway, because you do get solar even when it's cloudy. Uh, but this system was actually installed by us after we got the boat, quite a few months after when the solar system that was on here just wasn't doing the job at all. So we got these put on instead and then and a new charge controller. You and my dad did it, didn't you, yeah, last September? Yes, yeah, so you can so. tilt them side to side <laughs> and you can do it slightly forward to forwards and backwards as well. So yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty handy, isn't it? Yeah. This is the charge controller. It regulates the energy that comes in from the solar panels. And there are cables here that lead to the batteries and come from the solar panels. So one thing that we find with the solar is that even if it is a very overcast day, as long as it's quite bright, the light diffuses through the clouds and we still get quite a lot of power. However, it has been really dark recently already. So you know, those sort of very dark, heavy rain clouds that they just don't seem to let much light through at all. And we've been under trees. So we've had to have the engine on. We don't really like doing that because obviously it's using fuel, it's loud. If we're moving the boat, that's a whole different thing. We need to have the engine on so it charges our batteries then as well. We think it's about a litre per hour. That's what people say. It's roughly about a litre an hour, is it? That's what we say. But yeah, so obviously that depends on how much your diesel is. I think it's about 180 a litre at the moment. It's a cost that we don't want to really have to have. So that's why solar is obviously, is obviously great. But now we're going to show you our new addition that has been a bit of a game changer. This is our new addition to how we can generate and store electricity on the boat. So we've got two 100 watt solar panels. They're called Solar Saga 100. And they plug in to the Jackery and I'm going to show you how we do that. It's very easy. One of the great things about this Jackery is the fact that the panels are movable and we can pack them away. It's all very portable, isn't it? Yeah, it's very portable. Depending on where we moor the boat, we don't always get the panels in the sun. So the ability to put the panels where we want with this just means that there are days that we'll get energy when we wouldn't have otherwise got it. Both of those in the full sun. So now that's getting 100 and 30 watts coming in. Pretty cool. <laughs> Just more power. So we've yeah. got the big solar on the roof of our boat charging the batteries in the engine bay. And we've got these charging the jackery. And what we've actually ended up doing a lot is we've been, well, this is what we've been doing all the time since we got the jackery. We charge laptops and phones and I use my blender using the jackery. And then we just use the electricity from those panels that's stored in the batteries in the engine bay just for the lights and the water pump because if we run out of power from the batteries that are in the engine bay that means we're in the dark and we've got no water. But the, the other great thing about it is it's just really good at storing the electricity that gets generated. Yeah. Only thing is getting Alan used to the Jackery because Alan sees it sort of as an invasion of her territory. They're super easy to put away these panels because they're like magnetised. They've got little legs and they've got little pouches that you can put their wires in. So we're going to be using this in the van as well, aren't we, Benny? Yeah. It's going to be so good for like festivals and camping. We have no power in our van. So yeah, it's going to be amazing to actually be able to work from the van sometimes so I can like go away and use it for like video editing or we've got a little fridge in the van so yeah it's going to be super helpful you can actually plug usb things in straight into the panel so you can charge your phone which is just like another little bonus and you can have a shave outside oh my god <laughs> 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 well let's keep going now <laughs> You've missed, a, you've missed a massive bit of the stuff. I haven't missed anything. <laughs> That's fine, I'm going out now. <laughs> I'm going out. So it's not always sunny, as you know, 
unlike our own panels you can't always charge the jackery with the solar but you can also charge the jackery using the boat's power so yesterday we did a seven hour cruise we had it on charge the whole way when we got here the boat's batteries were charged and the jackery was also charged so we're having some mad pink salad yeah we're having a beetroot salad <laughs> with some sourdough bread oh yeah yum 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 thanks for making an amazing lunch benny it's right. you look after me don't you Alan, have you had your biscuits? And listen to how silent it is. When Benny stops chewing. So we're going to go on a little excursion now and try something out. Musically. By a lake. Play. Yeah. By late, we're going to play some songs to the birds. Okay, you're having a turn, aren't you now? Yep. So we're on our way to this uh, small lake to to do a bit of music, and I think that our boat friends, the floating home, Adam and Lauren, are just coming through the tunnel in front of us. Let's see yeah, if it's it them. Fun. Oh, it is them. You're right back there. Yeah. It's official. Yeah, it's them. Excellent, they have arrived. Here we go. We've got a boat in here. <laughs> it is ridiculously beautiful here. So if you're wondering where we are, like we said, we're doing some time traveling. So you'll have to wait until our vlog about being on the Kangochlan and going up to Ellesmere because that's kind of where we are at the moment but we're just doing this power episode because our videos are about a month behind usually we have a friend now you're sweet hello are you a friendly fellow <laughs> here we are this is where we're going to set up I mean, <laughs> what a great place to have a little, we're not really going to play a full gig because we want to be respectful of the beautiful silence here, but we're going to just do a quick few minutes, aren't we Benny? So Benny did just do a full track as well just then, so you'll have to go and check that out over on his Bingo Harry YouTube channel. We'll put the link below for you, or here. So yeah, go check out that the full track that he's just um, that he's just done out here. Well, that was great fun. I've wanted to do something like that for a while, so it was great to bring all my pedals out here and get looping a bit of guitar and doing that kind of thing. Just packing up, go back to the boat. There you go, Benny's little uh, walkabout studio. Well, not studio, but what do you what would you call it, Benny? I don't know, like it's like a portable um, gig setup, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> it's just getting a bit dark now, but this place is beautiful. So now we're into the evening. Alan is helping Emily 
edit the video. And the jackery is keeping the laptop nice and charged as, as the work continues. Thanks for watching our extra video. We hope that it was informative for you. At least a little bit interesting. And we'll be back to our normal video on Saturday. So see you then. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.